In this video of the Retro Text Adventure tutorial, we are going to add colored text to our game, which is going to make it so much easier to parse through what is going on instead of it all just being a massive wall of white. Let's get started. So the first thing that we want to do in order to make our game look better is just to add some coloring and formatting to our responses. And so if I go over to our response scene, we'll see that right now our response is just a label and labels are really good at just rendering text. That's what they do. But there are some limitations. The nice thing is that they handle, they work with containers really well. They handle formatting well, um, but you can only have one color. You can't format different parts of the same label in different ways. So it's a rigid way of displaying text in one consistent way for all the text within it. And in order to provide different colors for our responses and to format, format them differently within the same text, we're actually going to need to change our response to be a rich, or we're actually going to need to change our response from a label to a rich text label. So I'm going to right click and hit change type and oh, there it is, rich text label. You're going to want to search that and change our response to be a rich text label node. So I'll hit change. And instantly you'll see that our, our font has reverted to Godot's default. So I'm gonna explain all the stuff we need to do here, but first let's just scroll down and under theme overrides, you'll find just like with a regular label, a font override. And you'll see here in our rich text label that there's a bunch of different options. You can provide a separate italic or bold or mono or bold italics font. Now our previous label used our Plex Mono 28 font. So I'm gonna grab that from our file explorer and just drag that right into the normal font section. And now instantly we'll see that our rich text label response looks just like it did before with our regular label. So this is a good start. There's a couple other things we need to do. One thing is you'll see that there's this fit content height property right here. I'm gonna be honest, I don't fully know all the calculations going on underneath the hood with this option. What I do know is that because rich text labels provide ways for the text itself to decide how it's formatted, it does not always play nice with Godot's container system. And what that means is that when you would expect your containers to automatically format and resize as children, sometimes if some of those children are rich text labels, it won't actually be formatted and resized correctly because of the way the engine handles BB code and rich text labels. So again, I'm not totally sure why this is necessary, but I know that if you don't select this button, the height of your rich text label will sometimes not adjust properly with containers. And we're using a bunch of containers, so we need to check this. I think I'm using Godot 3.4.2 right now, so this might change in a future version, probably in Godot 4 it'll be gone. But for now, if you're on 3.4.2, you'll probably wanna check this, experiment with it on your own, and if you're having problems, maybe toggle it on and off and see what works. But anyway, so we have our rich text label here. And the other thing we need to change, and let me just explain a little bit of how rich text labels work. So just like a regular label, you can adjust the text in this text field. I can say, hello world and it'll adjust just like a regular label. But the real power of a rich text label comes not from this text property, but actually from its BB code property. And you'll see down here on the right, there's this BB code section. If I expand that, there'll be an enabled flag we can set here. Once I enable this, this text property up here is no longer what the rich text label actually uses. It's not what we're gonna be editing. What happens instead is it's this BB code text property. And if I hover over it, you'll see that the property name is BB code underscore text. So from code, this is the property we now want to edit and modify. It's BB code underscore text and not just text. And what's gonna happen is you'll see that if I start typing down here and say, hello world, this will automatically be sent to the original text property. So you don't wanna edit this text property at all, you just wanna work with the BB code text property. Now, you might be asking, okay, this seems like a lot of work for doing the same thing, but let me show you one cool thing about BB code and why we're using it. And that is the fact that you can include tags, both style and formatting tags in BB code, tell the engine how to render text. So to do a, make a tag in BB code, you just use square brackets. And within these square brackets, you enter some kind of a keyword. The one we'll use most is color. So I can say color, you just type the word color equals, and then here I can enter either a string color or a hexadecimal string. If I just enter green, we'll see all of a sudden that our text has turned green. You can close the tag by doing the square brackets again and doing slash color. And this will close that tag. 
Now you'll see that if I add more text, it won't be green. So I can say, how are you doing? And now it's back to white text. And again, you've probably assumed this, but a really powerful thing about BB code is that you can do multiple colors and multiple formats within the same label. So if I now say color equals red, the rest of our label will be red. So this is why we want to use BB code. And just a quick overview of why it's helpful and how it works. It's not just color that you can do. You can also do some formatting and bold or italics. It lets you just customize your text within your label. And so what we're gonna to need to do is set this BB code text property from code and we're going to, whenever in our command processor we are returning strings, we're now gonna to need to include some BB code formatting so that when we display those strings in our game info, they will be formatted and colored correctly. So with that, let's go to our input response scene over here. And we'll see now that our input or our response is updated. It's got the color here, but let's actually set this from code. So if I go into input response script, now we need to change our response label, which is our rich text label here, to not use just text anymore. Remember, like we said, we need to use BB code text. So what I'm gonna do is change line 14 to reference BB code text, and you'll see we'll get the autocomplete there. And just like that, we're now using BB code to format our game. And if I run it, we should just make sure it all looks the same because we're not actually including any BB code tags. It should still just work as we would expect. So if I type go west, it looks exactly like we would expect. So that's good. This is a good start here, but now we're able to start adding in some of our own coloring. So toward that end, let's actually pick some colors first and then it'll be quicker for us to just add those in as we go. I'm actually gonna go into our types, our global type script here, and I'm gonna add some just basic colors, uh, just some constant values. So I want a separate color for NPCs, I want a separate color for items, and I want a separate color for speech, and maybe a fourth color of system events, or just important information. And actually, well, maybe a fifth color for rooms or locations too. So you can decide what colors you want and et cetera. I'm just gonna pick some using a little color picker app and add them, but I'll just show you the code. You can edit this for your own game, absolutely. Find your own colors and use your own formatting system. So first, let's just say const, and I'm gonna make all these constants because I don't want them to change via code. They're just constant values we can reference. And I'll say color, NPC and for now I'm just going to call the color and we'll just do one 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 This is I'm just gonna default and mock all these out. So we want an NPC color. Let's see. We want also a item color and we want a speech color and We want a location color and finally like we said we want a system color Okay, let me get rid of these two lines here. So again, these are all just white right now, but I'm going to go through and pick some colors for each of these and add them to our game. All right, so I just went online and found this nice color red. It's FF9A94, and I just found some basic complementary colors down here, and I'm just gonna pull some of these into the game. So let me just pull these in, and then I'll, I'll pause the screen for a minute, and you can kind of look at them and copy in them if you want, or just choose your own colors. Okay, I am back in Godot, and here are the colors I have. So if you want to copy these, just pause the video and add these in yourself. NPC is that nice light red we saw. Item is a blue, I believe. Speech is a nice light green. Location is a kind of light yellow and system is kind of a light orangish and I'm not saying these are great colors or anything Just trying to showcase what we can do again, please choose your own colors But anyway, feel free to grab these if you want or find your own But now we're ready to start adding these to our game. All right So in order to do that, let's go to our command processor and in a different world, if we had a bit more time, I would refactor our command processor not to return strings itself, but to instead return kind of a process response. So something like a code or an enum value, like if you go, it was like action successful and like new room. So it would just return basically whether an action worked or not, if there was an error and we'd have a bunch of error codes. So the command processor wouldn't actually return any strings, it would just return a, a like a, action success or action failed result or something like that, which we'd have a bunch of predefined codes. And then it would be up to our game info itself to handle formatting that and creating text that matches that area code or that error code. I think that would be a really good refactor to do. That would really add a bunch of nice modularity and some decoupling to our game and make it easy to implement more things later on. But again, we've got a pretty good system for now and I'm happy with it. 
So I'm going to add a bunch of our color formatting to our command processor. I just wanted to note that I don't actually think this is the best place to do it, but just for the sake of time, we'll do it here. So what I want to do is go through all of the strings that we are returning in this entire script and then add in some color formatting whenever we reference one of the things we just added colors for. So whenever we reference an NPC, we should wrap that NPC's name in our NPC color. Same with an item, same with our system message. And so we're just going to systematically go through all of the references in our command processor and add color formatting to them. Alrighty, so if we start scrolling down, the first message we're actually, well, I guess on 16 we might return that, but let's skip that one for now. The first message we're actually going to be returning to the player is on line 41, this unrecognized command, please try again. And for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna wrap our error messages or at least our invalid command messages um, in our system color. You might have a separate error color if you want. Again, do what you want, but for now we'll just wrap in system. And rather than having to insert the BB code color tags into all of these manually, which is just gonna be a lot of extra work if you have to change it. So rather than going like color equals, et cetera, in all of these, I'm actually gonna make really nice helper functions in our type script that can just be called from anywhere in our code. So what I'm gonna do, we're looking at system right now, so I'll start there. So I'll just say function wrap system text. You can call it whatever you want, but I just want this to say, hey, you pass in some text here and this function will wrap it in our system text color BB code. So we'll just say text, this is gonna be a string because we need to pass in the string to wrap and then it's gonna return the new formatted string of wrapped colors. So the way we wanna do this is say return text, except a little bit more than that. What we actually need to do is wrap this text now in our BB code color tag. So we can do that by creating a string and then we'll add our tag in and say color equals. And this is where we're gonna to have to interpolate in the hex value or the really HTML color value that you see up in here. So for our system, we need to insert FFD394 into our text here as a string literal. And in order to do that, we can say percent %s and then close our tag. And then I'm gonna take out text here and make this another percent %x because we're gonna interpolate in not only our system color right here, but our text itself. And we'll need to add our closing tag. Okay, so now we are returning valid BB code text here. We just need to actually interpolate in our values. And you'll remember that we do that with the percent sign. And because we have multiple things to interpolate, we need to use an array right here. And so our first percent %s is going to be our system color. And the way that we get this HTML value, this hex value of our system color is a string, is a built-in method called toHTML. So I can do color, system, we'll find our system color, and all colors have an HTML method, to HTML. And so if we call this, you'll see there's a, a parameter we can pass in to include the alpha value. We are always gonna have an opaque value, an alpha of one, non-transparent color, so we don't actually need to do that. We can leave it as is, or I guess it, it defaults to true, but either way, we don't have to pass in a parameter. So that's gonna be the first color that we pass in, and then we also need to now interpolate in our text. And just like that, it's that easy. We are now interpolating not only a color, but our text into a valid BB code wrapper. Now, the one thing we're forgetting though, and what might not be apparent is that this to HTML only returns the character values of the hex. It doesn't actually include this, this hash mark, the pound symbol in front. So we need to manually include that. So before we interpolate in our colors HTML value, we need to manually add our hash mark, our pound symbol here, so that it'll be interpreted as a hex color. Okay, now that we have this function, we are ready to actually use it in our command processor. And you probably guessed we're gonna be doing this exact same function. We're gonna be creating a helper like this for all of our colors. I'll probably do that work off camera, but you're literally just gonna copy this and change the color system to be color location or speech, item, NPC, et cetera. So just make helpers for this that match the others. Okay, so off camera quickly, I just made all of those other helper functions. We've got NPC, item, speech, location, and the system one we already had, and I just changed all their color values. So make sure you do that in your own game if you haven't now. But now that we've got all these helpers here, we are ready to actually use them in our command processor. So let's see this in action. Now, remember we added these functions to our global types script, which we're referencing as an autoload with just the keyword types. So if I say types, and then we should see 
our wrap system text function here. And then we're just gonna pass in the same string we are already using and close that out. And so what this is gonna do is return some text that has those BB code tags, which should color it. So before we keep going, let's test this and make sure it works. So if I run our game, we'll just have to enter an invalid code and see that it works as we'd expect. So if I just pound some keys, there we go. Unrecognized command, please try again. This is awesome. This is exactly what we wanted to happen. And this color makes it so much easier to parse the information our game is telling us. Once we have all of our colors in there, it trains a user to expect certain information associated with certain colors. And so as they play our game, they learn, oh, okay, yellow is always a system message, green is always speech, and if they're scrolling back through their history, they won't have to spend as much time trying to parse out what is what in the text because the colors will inform them where they need to look. So this is a really helpful thing that makes the playability or replayability of our game much higher. So this is a good start, but we're not done yet. Let's keep going through here in our command processor. So I think too, whenever this is an error message up here that we wrapped as system text, let's do the same thing for um, our go where, whenever we enter a, a command and we didn't enter it correctly. So I'm just gonna copy types.wrap system text here, including that parenthesis, paste that, copy that in here. And then for things like the way wherever is currently locked, this is where it's gonna get a little tricky. And again, use you're probably gonna use your own judgment to do things a little differently in your own game. Again, just trying to give an example of how we can do this. But what I wanna do is not wrap the entirety of this. So, so for this statement right here, this is if you try to go into an exit that is locked. I don't wanna wrap all of the text in color because I want colors to mean something and I still wanna use white text in a lot of places, but I wanna wrap specific things in certain colors. So what I'm gonna do instead is keep the way as white and is currently as white, but I want locked to be a special color and I want this percent %s, which is our second word, which is the exit we tried to go to, I want those to be their own colors. So what I'm gonna do is break up this string and you can use either templating here or you can use string interpol or concatenation like I'm gonna use. And then because we're using concatenation, I don't actually need that percent %s anymore. So what I'm gonna do is say types dot wrap. And then remember our second word here in go is a location. Go here, our second word is west or north or path. So because it's a location, I wanna wrap it in location text. So I'll say second word. And then we're gonna concatenate the rest of this string. So is currently. And then again, remember, I wanna do locked as its own color. And for locked, I'm gonna use our same system color as before. So I'll say types.wrap system text. And it's kinda of going a little off screen, but I'll just do this and make sure that we add our quotation mark there, close this function out. And now all of a sudden, we are saying the way in white text, and then our second word, which will be in location text, uh, so it'll be colored separately, is currently locked. And so this is just gonna make it really clear to the player, hey, you've got this whole sentence, but the important information is displayed in the color. So it makes scanning back through much easier. I'm also gonna add a space here because I know that's gonna look weird if I don't. So a space on both sides of this. Oh, actually space here too. <laughs> don't forget to do spaces. So let's test this one out quick by just going to our first locked door, which is the shed to the in kitchen, just to make sure that our multiple colorations in the same line works the way we want. So if I open our game, I can try going west. And remember, we've got go north, which is the door to the inn. So if I try to go north, we should see the way north is currently locked. This is super cool. So now we are able to add multiple colors within the same line within the same label and this is the power of bb code and what i'm going to do now is go through the rest of our command processor and wrap or add these these wrap text functions wherever we need to i'm going to do this off camera just because it's going to take a while so feel free to do it on your own and mix it up you might choose different colorations for some messages than i do but we'll come back in just a second all right so i have systematically gone through and wrapped all the text in the appropriate colors so we've got a lot of system text like go where you'll see i've interpolated a lot of different wrapping within larger commands so if it's all pretty self-explanatory so for take you know there's the second word wrap item etc so it's pretty much what you would expect here. One thing I did want to go over that I thought was a nifty little change I made. Um, I did change some of the lettering, some of the wording in, in these functions. So, you know, again, this is a good time to go through and proofread and maybe 
make some of your text that you display better. One thing I did change though is our help command. I changed it to be a pool string array, which we've used in different places in this project already, which it just lets you pass in an array and then join that array together into a string. And what I actually did is for all the commands, I added a space at the start of them just so it's easy. And I made them all appear on a new line. I think it's just easier to read this way. And then I, of course, wrapped their certain what parameters they take and the appropriate color. So let me just run the game and we'll kind of walk through what this looks like now. Again, you'll notice that all of our initial text here isn't colored because I've only changed the coloring in the command processor, not elsewhere in the game, like in our game info. So we'll have to do that later. But now if I say go west, you'll see you go west. And let's see if I try and go north, which should be locked. We'll see the way north is currently locked. So again, this is looking really good. If I go path and then let's see, go east. I can go inside. Let's try talking to the innkeeper. So if I talk innkeeper, you'll see now we've got this really nicely colored dialogue. And I think this is just way easier to read. And if you're scrolling back through, it's really helping you parse through the information that you need much quicker. And that'll only continue to be easier as we color the rest in. So one thing that I want to do, well, actually, let's go south into the kitchen. Let's take, let's say take item. This should be invalid. Now if I say take key, you'll see again, we're getting these error messages. And if I say use key, we use a key to unlock the way the back of the end. Okay, so there's still some grammar that needs work. But again, we're seeing how these colorations just make the game look better. And of course, let me show off the help command because I think this looks super cool. So this little space in front of each command just makes it much easier to read. It's very clear, okay, each line is its own command. Some of them take a parameter, some of them don't. And again, we're trying to train the player what the meaning of each color is, a different thing, item, NPC, location, etc. So here we go. These are all the changes I've made. I think it just makes things much nicer and better. Now let's go through and add colors to the rest of our code, not in our command processor. So the first place I want to do that is in our change room function. You'll see this is where we're getting room descriptions, and that's by far the biggest biggest chunks of text that we're showing. So if we can add some color here, it'll really make our game look better. So let's go into our game room script. Again, not room anymore, not after Godot 3.4. Hope you've changed that. And we're gonna go through all of these different description functions and add in their own text wrapping. Again, I'll do this off camera just cause it's a lot of tedium. But for example, where we do NPC strings right here, I'm gonna wrap the NPC name in our NPC text. Same with our items, wrap it in our item text. You get the idea. So go through and just wrap all of these in the appropriate colored text. All right, so again, I've gone through our game room and I've wrapped our locations, our NPCs, our items, and our exits, just in all of their respective colorations. So if you run this, let me just go to the in kitchen so that we can best uh, see it. But you'll see already that we've got the shed, both the exits and the room colored. So if I go west, go a path. Again, this just looks, it's starting to look a lot better. Let's go east and then go inside. We'll see the innkeepers right there. If I go south, now we have an item. So we've got NPC and item coloration in our room descriptions. Again, we're just adding more and more detail. So now that we've got rooms, I think the last place we need to add some coloration is in our game info script because we wanna have our beginning information once our game starts to have some color to it. And actually we'll probably need to do this in game because we are just passing in that string information to our game info. So in line 11, when we do game info.create response, let's wrap this in types dot wrap system text and we'll just wrap this whole thing <laughs> now if we start it there we go we've got a little help message right at the beginning that's colored differently it kind of indicates like hey this is a little bit different this is you know you've started the game so there we go there is our attempt at just adding some color to our game and i think even this makes the text stand out one thing we could also do to really make things stand out and just differentiate between different commands we've already got a bit of a buffer between commands. So if I say go path, we see that there's this little bit of space right here. And this helps us separate out each command from each other, but it still can be a little hard to read. And so one thing I want to do is just add a bit of zebra coloration, which just makes each line a different color from the one before. You'll see this, it's very common in tables. And even if you don't know the name, you know what it looks like. So what we're gonna do is just add some coloration to every other input response, just so that they're a little bit easier to distinguish when one ends and when one begins. So in order to add our zebra coloration, let's go into input response. And what I'm gonna do here, it's actually really simple, is I'm gonna hit Command A, 
or control it. And I'm just gonna add a panel. And what a panel is, is it is a control node that lets you just basically add some styling. It's not a container, so it's it needs a parent container to determine how big it is. And we're gonna add this panel to be a child of our input response, a child of our margin container, and not a child of rows. And what we're gonna do is we just want this. I, I don't wanna, so I wanna respect the background coloring of our game itself. I don't wanna add new colors to our input response. So all we're gonna do is just make this panel a super transparent, but just a little bit of additional lightening to the background of our input response, just so that our input response itself de determines what color it is and it doesn't have to worry about overriding the color of the game below it. So what I mean by that is if we select our panel and I'm gonna call this Zebra, if I come into our theme overrides and, and find styles, I'm gonna create a new style box flat. And what I'm gonna do is just set this color to be pure white but I'm gonna drag the alpha down to 16, so it's gonna be super low, and you'll already see that it's hardly noticeable. It just lightens up the background a little bit. And what I'm also gonna do is, because our zebra panel is a child of our margin container, it also is affected by our margin. So you'll see it doesn't go all the way to the end. I'm gonna give it some expand margin here in our style. This is not on our panel itself, but on the style it's using. And what this does is it expands the style's borders, basically beyond the actual content box of the panel itself. This is kind of hacky, this isn't my favorite way to do it, but just for the sake of trying to have this style look good. So we've got a margin left and right of five. So let's add our expand margin to be five. So this is just gonna match what our parent is. If you wanted this to be a little bit safer, you could do this via code so that if you change your margin constants in your margin container, this would automatically update rather than hard coding it. But for now, we'll just hard code. So now our, our panel is gonna match the edge on our left and right, but we also want to do some margin on the bottom because you might remember in our game info, in our history rows, we have a constant separation of 20. And this means that 20 pixels are basically inserted between each child of our history rows. So so we want the coloring of our zebra panel to extend that far down. So we're gonna add a bottom expand margin of 20 also to match our history rows separation value. Again, you could programmatically add this to prevent it from being hard coding, but we're just trying to get something that looks good and works. So now that we have this, we need a way via code to determine if this panel should show. So what I'm gonna do is add a new onReady variable to reference our zebra panel in our input response. So we'll say onReady var, and I'll just call this zebra, and this will be a reference to zebra. And we won't actually do any other code in here. What I'm gonna do is come into our game info script, and I'm gonna add a new Boolean flag that it'll, it'll toggle back and forth to determine if this row needs to be zebra or not. So I'm gonna say variable zebra. This is gonna be, actually, sorry, let's say should zebra. This indicates that it's a Boolean, and I'm gonna make this false by default. And then what we're gonna do, thankfully we have one handy dandy helper function, which is the only place we're adding a child to our history rows. What we're gonna do is say, if should zebra, then all we're gonna, actually let's, let's negate this. So if this row should not be zebraed, so if not should zebra, all we'll do is say response.zebra, and remember we can just access that because it's a property on our response or our input response class. We can just say response.zebra.hide, and then this will hide it. Now there's one other thing we have to do, and this is flip our should zebra variable back and forth. So we'll just say should zebra equals not should zebra. And all this is gonna do is flip it. So if should zebra is true, it's now gonna be not true, which is false. So this is a quick and dirty way to just add some zebra coloration. Let's try it out. And you'll notice it looks pretty good so far. And having an alpha value of 16 out of 255 is about right. You really don't want it to be that noticeable. And I think this is a good amount. So let's start typing some things and see how it looks if I keep adding more and more to our game. And I think that looks pretty good. It's again, it helps if you scroll back. It just makes it pretty clear where one input history item begins and the next one ends. You might not like this change. You might not want to do it. You might want to change the colors. Again, totally fine. I just want to show some options for how you can continue to improve the look of your game. But I think this is an easy way that we can just add some different coloration. And even when I start typing other things, you'll see that it's pretty consistent. So again, do what you will in your own game, but now we've added, with pretty easy effort, a zebra coloration to our text. 
So this is really cool. I mean, we have a game that now is looking pretty good, that has some polish, and most importantly, it's opened the door for you to expand and customize it however you want. So thanks so much for watching, everyone. I hope that you've learned a lot from this video. If you have, a like and subscribe to support the channel are always appreciated. We'd love to have you in the Discord server. The link to that is in the description below. We can answer any of the questions you might have there. And if you do find my work helpful, donating a coffee on Buy Me a Coffee, link to that in the description below also is really helpful, helps me continue to make great videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.